the rundown. Tuesday, December 19th, brought to you by the Barstool Arizona Bowl. Barstool Sports Arizona Bowl is coming to Tucson, Arizona, Saturday, December 30th. The Wyoming Cowboys take on the Toledo Rockets live from Arizona Stadium on Barstool.tv and the CW. Pre-game coverage begins at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. local time, followed by kickoff. Tune in December 30th on Barstool.tv and the CW. The Toledo Rockets, they have a rocket on their campus that's pointing at Bowling Green. Correct. Their rival. It's like the trajectory of that rocket is facing for, towards their stadium. It's I guess crazy. it's that's like actually calibrated to like hit our union. Yeah, that, well, it's crazy, but it's awesome. <laughs> I kind of love that. Sure. Uh, love a good rivalry. Nothing better. Uh, start off the rundown. Monday Night Football. Seahawks beat the Eagles 20 to 17 with some late not, late game heroics from Drew Locke. The Drew Locke, uh, what was it, John Rich? Drew Locke legacy drive. Drew Locke legacy drive. John Rich called it last night. Uh, game winning drive. DK Metcalf had some incredible plays. Uh, yeah, Jalen Hurts intercepted it. They had a chance to go down and tie it. We saw the fucking game, Bibbs. You were there? You watched? We, we, we all yeah, watched. We, we were all yeah. in the room together. We were all in the room. You had a good time, right? Yes. Drew, Drew Locke. Not, not Patrick Mahomes, not John Elway, not Peyton Manning. It's prime. Drew Locke, 92 yards, minute 55. Didn't even need the timeout that he had. Drew Locke. I mean, yeah, they, they, uh, Jalen Hurts chucked one down to – Well, that was – Got intercepted. When they, all they needed was a field goal. They needed like yeah. 13 yards. Yeah, I don't, and they had two timeouts. I still don't understand what happened there. Did yeah. they explain why they threw the ball 1,000 yards? So I'm not – 10? I'm not sure if you can see it, but – simultaneously when Jalen Hurts uh, got the play call that and they only needed 15 yards he blatantly shit himself really and tried mm -hmm. to go deep to AJ Brown and Devontae Smith on the sidelines for 50 yards when you only need Kenny Gainwell two yards right there to get you 10 years look Jalen Hurts he was sick going into the game People are comparing him on Philly Sports Radio right now to Carson Wentz, which I don't think is that fair. But also might be a compliment because in 2019, uh, Carson Wentz didn't have anybody to throw to. He still threw for 4,000 yards, which is Eagles record at the time. People forget that. But Joe Hurts, he's sick. He made some bad decisions last night. The Eagles overall did not play well. James Bradbury is fucking toast. I've never seen a defender go from an all-pro to being a burnt dick so fast. He was thrown... Six passes last night. Guess what his stats were, Vibs? Six passes. Two, two touchdowns, 120 yards. Six catches, 120 plus yards and a touchdown. Wow, Vibsy. They were sick. I watched the game. I was watching. We all watched together. Drew Locke was six for six throwing to James Bradbury. Uh, Acceptable. Eagles. They're they're they're, they're they have an row. issue right now. Yeah. Lost three in a row. They're cooked. Three Are they cooked? No, they're not cooked, but they're ten and four and they got problems. When Jalen Hurts is very mild-mannered, a leader of men, doesn't say anything to the media or give anybody any crumbs about what's going on the team, says that there's a commitment problem in the locker room, that's an issue. Yeah. I think the Eagles – so the Eagles probably won't get the number one seed now. The Niners probably have, have that. Correct. Right. Okay. But I still really love your chance to win the division. You guys will still have a home playoff game. You guys will have, be the number two seed. You better win the division. Yeah, the Cowboys' schedule is very hard. Uh, Eagles schedule. Eagles play the Giants twice. Uh, it's not that that they're losing these did, games. It's how. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're not scoring any points. They don't have the it factor that they had last year coming into this year in the beginning of the season. They should have lost more games before they were 10-1. and one, But now they're 10-4. and four. They're struggling on offense. They don't know what they're doing. They Christian McCaffrey from the peanut gallery talking to the Mannings on the couch is literally calling out plays before they happen. That is so unacceptable. Vanilla, vanilla offense. Beyond vanilla. Yeah. What's more vanilla than vanilla? Water. There you go. French vanilla. I don't know. Would you? Sure. So where did it? Where, what is the Eagles' final record? They're ten Skin. and four right now. They're ten and four. Yes, they they will finish. Well, I don't. Twelve and five. All right. You play I the, agree. I, I agree with you. You play the Giants twice, twice in three weeks. Why? I hate that. And the example. Cardinals. Why do you do that? Like, why does the, do the NFL schedule makers do that? I think it's stupid. Because space Roger, them out. Roger Goodell. It'd be awesome if they were like on top of the division. Yeah, it would be really exciting yeah. if the Giants were. Yeah, true. Like, I but I, I, I think you, yeah, you space them out. Have 
the whatever, three in the beginning, three at the end. It's all right. Boston Scott hasn't scored a touchdown all year. He's scoring four times in the next two weeks against the Giants. Next three weeks. Again. Was it fun being able to watch the game with me last night? With you? Yeah. Sure. There you go. <laughs> See? It wasn't so bad. Last night was fun after all. It's a disaster. She's an absolute disaster. How? Uh, Pointless. They haven't beaten the Seahawks since 2008. How's that happen? Winning in Seattle's tough. Anywhere. Just, they haven't beaten him anywhere. Since I'm just saying. I, I, is it horrible loss? I'm not going to sugarcoat it. What's but your, but I, do, I do think the Eagles. The Seahawks didn't play that well. That's the problem. Yeah. Other than the last drive yeah, and, and, the, and the drive yeah. after the halftime, yeah. they didn't even play well. You was just stink. What is your What is your mood the day after the game? Are you Are you full on hate life? Want to crawl in a hole and die, or are you just kind of in the middle, like a full on ten? You usually five? A pretty cheery guy. <laughs> You seem like you're all right. I'm adequate because I know they're going to make the playoffs and yeah. they still have a chance. Okay. But the fact that they really have a minuscule opportunity at the number one overall seed now and just knowing you have to go into San Fran to play the 49ers, that's an issue. Knowing that there's questions about Jalen Hurts now, that's a little bit of an issue. Knowing that the defense still like kind of sucks when it matters, that's a huge issue. Yeah. So... All right, stick, Whatever. sticking with football, uh, Rashard Mendenhall had a tweet yesterday where he is sick of average white guys commenting on football. Uh, can we please, he says, can we please replace the Pro Bowl with all black versus all white bowl so these cats can stop trying to teach me who's good at football. I'm better than your goat. So, uh, follow up tweet. Uh, follow up tweet. I'd like to know, i like to know which average white guy broke the camel's back here. Like, like who, what was the tweet that? Well, yeah, was, who is fucking, who is Mendehall watching? I will say it is it is frustrating when like people that are just idiots think they're dunking on you. Mm -hmm. and it's like you don't understand what you're talking about. But I mean, but when he said weird, uh, like is Bill Belichick and Andy Reid are they allowed to comment on football? Do they know what they're talking? Like, where is Ben and Hall? Like, what is he? Right. Like, what is? What was he? That's what I'm saying. He's just watching Dan, like Orlovsky make a, a comment, and or Dan Orlovsky's pretty good. Yeah. Right? But, but you know, him or, or like David Carr. Maybe he's like, have his ass. Like Skip yeah, Bayless yeah. or something. Maybe like I don't know uh, what Trent exactly he's. Silver. Let's face it. The Patriots aren't good anymore. Uh, Trent Dilfer. They're kind of two different issues, right? Like the black versus white bowl, and then just somebody sitting on your couch, like. Telling yeah, very sucks. Like, what is yeah. the relation there? It was very weird to go into to yeah race on this, but right, very, very weird yeah. to go into all segregation. Yeah, yeah. But I think <laughs> Will, Will Compton <laughs> yeah. made it funny with his video uh, drafting. He drafted the white team, which the experts are saying that the 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 black team the point spread would be astronomically high. But are right. Like, how how are we going to stop the explosive nightmare of the all black offense? I don't know. I think it'd be pretty equal. But Will Compton was saying the white team's got to play zone. That's going to get shredded. You can't play zone. I've seen the Patriots play or play the Steelers where the Steelers play zone. And they just, they just dominate with Gronk and, and Edelman. So I don't know. You got to have, you got to take like wide receivers and put them at cornerback. Yeah, you have McCaffrey playing both ways. I don't, I don't, I didn't get, I didn't get that. I didn't get why McCaffrey had to play. Well, who's going to, who's going to play corner or safety? I think you just take like like a like a, a Cooper Cup and put him at a, at, at cornerback. I mean, I guess he'd have to play both ways too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Playing like 1937 football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no breaks. Uh, yeah. I think it was it was it was good what Pat Bev did uh, <laughs> with his uh, <laughs> all white all all black team with Roan. Uh, what was the quote? Belt to ass. Belt to ass. Yeah. Belt to ass. <laughs> and he ain't wrong. Yeah. Old player Rashard Mendenhall was like, yeah. I'm tired of these fucking white guys talking about football. We need to have a white versus black Pro Bowl. So I'm curious how it would go in the NBA. So belt to ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, belt to ass, man. Hear me out. I heard you. Point guard, Luca. You Two, can't. Chet. Three, Lori. Four, Sabonis. Five, Joker. Coming off the bench, Hero, Sangoon, Gordon, AR, Gordon Hayward, Porzingis, versus everybody else. Versus everybody else. 
<laughs> MB, <laughs> LeBron, uh, KD, uh, Steph. Steph. And Tatum? I mean, you can go anywhere. You can literally go anywhere. The bench is wild. Our Stop. bench gets thin fast. I listen, the colored bench, <laughs> wow. James Harden is on the bench. Russ is on the bench. Like, we got some hitters on the bench. Hitters? With the ER? Belt it, ass. It's absolute belt to ass, but it's a fun mental exercise. Yeah, that's to fun, think though. About. That's fun. I, that's different, too. <laughs> well, wait till we talk about but, hockey. A lot of depth. Yeah, once you, once you get, maybe, maybe the starting five in the NBA would have a chance, even though they wouldn't. Uh, but once you get to that bench, you're done. You are yeah. absolutely toast. Yep. I, I, yes. I, nothing really to add. I, I might take away more is more just like where, like are people not allowed to be critical? And that's where I'm like, all right, so where is Rashad Mendenhall? Like who's allowed to comment on anything? Like, like Siskel and Ebert couldn't make a good movie, but they could talk about movies. Like people should be allowed to be critics. I think that's my... Like, you, guess what? You do entertainment for millions of people. People are going to not like you. That, that's okay. Yeah. Spoke, spoken like an average white guy commenting on football. That's fine. Yeah, a bull average, uh, honestly. A white guy talking about football. But like, but I said, where is the line then? Like I said, is, is, you know, is Andy Reid allowed to have an opinion? Well, I don't think Richard Mendenhall is going to have that. <laughs> Also, I don't. I have no idea. That's what I mean. Well, when you put a point out, you have to clarify. I mean, is it, but then again, yeah. it, it took a wild left turn with the race stuff. So I don't know what meant. Meant I don't all. understand when he's like, "I'm better than your goat." Like, what is, who, who, what? Yeah, I, I don't know. The, Very the, weird. The, the, the white you mean goat? like the greatest of all time? Like he so he thinks he's better than like Tom Brady? I don't. I don't understand what he's referencing. Jesus. Right. Yes. Well, I don't know Jesus. Yes, I don't know white Jesus. I, I, yes. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Was Jesus white? I don't know. Probably not. No, no. I don't think he was. No. no. Well, this is a fun topic. I, I knew this would be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I saw this on there. I was like, oh boy, here we go. Yeah, it's very weird. Like, I don't. We were saying earlier, it's kind of weird how it just kind of. I guess Compton made it fun, but Richard Mendenhall, I don't know if he, people were like, dude, but what are, you, what are you talking about? Like, why is this a thing? I haven't heard from Mendenhall in a while either. This is the first time I've heard him speak about something. Right? Yeah, uh, I didn't know. Yeah. It would save the Pro Bowl. Oh, the Pro Bowl is a fair pass. Who it's wouldn't watch that? Saves the Pro Bowl. Is, last year was the first year they did like a flag football type thing, and yeah. they're continuing it this year, and they did yeah. like dodgeball, and like, <laughs> what? Why? Why not? Who wouldn't watch a segregated Pro Bowl? Yeah. That's so absurd. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it, would, it, would, it would get better ratings. It would. I mean, it definitely would. All right, let's go to a, let's go to a, a lighter <laughs> topic. And Imagine the jerseys. <laughs> let's go to a, a less hot button issue topic. Abortion. Okay. Uh, Anthony Edwards addresses 100K abortion, 100, yeah, $100,000 abortion text sent to an Instagram model. So uh, there's a model who's like, hey, I'm pregnant with your baby. And he was like, all right, how, why is that my problem? Get an abortion. He was, uh, no matter how you feel on the topic, he didn't have much sympathy for, for what she was going through. But then the weirdest move was her sending like, an AI rendering of what the baby would look like to him. It's like, all right, well, these, both these people are, are a little, little crazy. Uh, and then he had to apologize. Then the next day he was like, hey, I'm sorry, that's not who I am. The apology was so, if you, you know, if you read the text that he sent the woman and then you read the apology, it seems like a very different, almost like a whole different person, almost like his legal team wrote the apology. Yeah, like, yeah, for it's sure. Al it's almost like if you add uh, LOL after get an abortion. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you, may, you might want to clarify yourself a little bit. Yeah. Uh, again, another another hot button issue. Yeah. Now. We're fucking <laughs> handling the topics. Um, but yeah, the, I thought the AI rendering of what the baby look, would look like was just a, a, a weird, like. So race, so race relations and abortion. I almost think John Rich is trying to get us fired. Yeah, probably. We got it. We're, we're a news program. We talk about the issues. This is this is hot. This is news. And who better to turn to than us three? If only we need a real a real news pundit to handle this. We need Mincy. We need Mincy. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's the only man in the company that can talk about it. We're not live. Also, the AI thing. That's weird. Yes, that's going to start becoming the norm. Like, imagine like gender reveal parties. Oh, like, like oh, what they were when they were adults. Yeah, like time yeah, reveal. Exactly. You you don't think AI is going to be all over that? Man, that's a scary future. He's probably right. Yeah. Yeah, AI is, I've, I've said it a million times. I think everyone agrees. And you show the reveal and the kid looks like me. It's like, oh, God, no. That's, that would be a horrible reveal. Skinny, compact. Well, the compact part's nice. 
Yeah, that's a that's a, that's well, a, a nice that's compact strike. baby. Get out of yeah. shoot right out of the, yeah. the baby chute. Um. All right. Next topic. It's, this one shouldn't be divisive or hot button issue. Nice. Aaron Rodgers. He's never said anything crazy. Uh, but no, Aaron Rodgers. Uh, he's cleared to play now. Yeah. Right? Something just kind of broke in the last like half hour. He had a press conference where he basically said he wasn't going to play. He like he, did, he didn't come out and say it entirely, which uh, true Aaron Rodgers leaves it open a little bit. But he basically said like. The, the, most likely would, would not play. He also said he's not 100% right now. Okay. Um, he, he said he would rush back if we were in the playoff line. Yeah, he, he is rushing back. Their offensive line isn't very good. I, <laughs> thought was, I thought it was crazy for him to come back and play. I'm like, what an idiot. He shouldn't. He's going to get hurt. Yes. I don't h- hate him coming back and playing. Like, if you go a full year without playing, like, you, you know, you, you get rusty. You need a little, I mean, he's, uh, he's a better. Wait, wait, is this true? Reports of him making quote one hand interceptions. I haven't seen a video. Yes. I haven't seen a video. That's, that's true. Yeah. What that, that, is he doing? He runs the practices. He's in charge of the team. The only reason Sala and Hackett have a job, and even Joe Douglas still, is because of Aaron Rodgers. I, Aaron I, Rodgers I, runs the franchise. I'm not denying that, but he what is he doing wants. playing scout team defense? You want right. to do that? Yeah. On a bum Achilles. On a, see, that's what I, you talk about getting rusty. Obviously, He's, that can happen, but. Achilles, you need, like, no one comes back in 12 weeks from an Achilles. Right, right, right. I just what are we remember, doing? Like, Paul George, when he, he snapped his ankle in half. Yeah. Uh, he missed, he would have missed the entire season, but right. then he came back for, like, the last, like, six games and got a cup, some reps in, yeah. got some practice in. So even if you're a vet, I think you still need to. I do think it's a little different with your Achilles. And football is such a short season. I don't, like, that's, that would be unparalleled. Yeah. Marino, in contrast, did tear his Achilles, came back the next year. Didn't have the same mobility, but could still throw. I think that's what you expect to get. Now, I don't have the answer to this question, but what's more likely? Aaron Rodgers defies all sorts of medical science and comes back after 12 weeks tearing his Achilles. Or he just didn't tear his Achilles. I, I don't know. Well, they have, I mean, new, well, they have a new uh, treatment now. They have this, they're called this bridge thing for your Achilles. I'm not a doctor at all, but I guess it's uh, new. It's a way to ex- expedite it. But yeah. it does come with more risk. Like, you know, if you're, it's still only, you know, what's it, 15 weeks into injury, right? So uh, that is putting it at greater peril. There's, there is a 0% chance that the New York Jets could keep that a secret. So that would get leaked so quickly. <laughs> like, they're, they're, yeah, Brett Favre's dick is making rounds in the Jets locker room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Training room. Like, Clemmer, do you think he should play? No. Uh, ab- the, this season? Yeah. Absolutely not. He should be at home. He should not be doing one-handed catches in practice. He should be at home doing whatever it takes to get ready for next season. The Jets season is officially over. It was over even before that. Everyone, all the Jets should care about is preparing for next season. I hope they lose the rest of their games, get a better draft pick. Nothing matters. Everything's terrible. Get ready for next year. You don't, you don't want them to beat the Patriots? I do not. I do not. Okay. I want them to lose the Patriots. Yeah. So the Patriots get a worse draft pick, and the Jets can hopefully get, get a better one. Yeah. Clemmer, my argument is that he, ever since he joined the team, he's been advertised as a god. If you watch you know, Hard Knocks, we have that whole thing. So to me, if he were to play, as in he's activated, and he opens the drive against the Patriots on the last week of the season, right now we have such a bitter taste in our mouths. If he scores, like leads one touchdown drive, Goes to the bench, he's elevated to that god status again. Ben, but what if ben, ben, are you, ben, are you a Jets fan? Yeah, major Jets. Fan. Okay, what what happens to us in that situation? I'm telling. He's a You know thing. what he's gonna do? He's gonna blow his other Achilles over in the touchdown. I don't think so. Go home. Our, our sample size is four, is four plays. I think that he has an extra what three weeks? There's three weeks left <laughs> in the season. Everyone wants to kill themselves right now. What if they see him score a touchdown, defying all medical odds? That would be so crazy. Can you imagine if we lost him for next year? I don't think we would. We still have. Do you think that was going to happen in game one? On the first play, I think if he defied the. Okay, right now, on, on the first series, what if they go three and out and yeah. everyone on the Jets is like, well, we suck. He's awful. Even our guy. Oh, yeah, even in that case, sucks. you don't play him, but we I have no hope. That what? Over. But that, that would be the worst Aaron case Rodgers. scenario. Aaron the worst Rodgers. case scenario is. You know, let's not forget that he's. stretcher. Dwayne Brown could be back by then. For, for the psychological perspective, I don't think it's. Uh, I would there, love. There, to there, there is no psych, there's no There's no psychological season. perspective that can possibly help you out right now until the beginning of next year. If he leads a touchdown drive, think about how it <laughs> oh. felt in the preseason. You're you're a young man. How, how how old are you? 23. Okay, I'm almost twice as old as you. Been through a lot of these. I always get mad and people say, "Oh, there's a curse in the Jets." I don't believe there's a curse. I don't believe curses exist. But I will say, 
there's enough of a, the curse in me. I'm like, just go away. Like, I've been through so many horrible things that have happened with this fucking team. Just take it from me. Take it from the old man. He should go home. Yeah. Be under a blanket. And stay there for six, seven months. And from an outsider's that perspective, that's been the toxic attitude in the Jets the whole time. It's always, all right, we're out of the playoffs. Week, been 14, the ass. week four, 15, and we just lose out. No one cares for the rest of this. But season. Ben, do you understand that him coming back when it means nothing and scoring a touchdown and giving you hope and acting like you think that it, that is a success for the Jets, not only this season, but the future, is embarrassing? There's rot in the program right now. And him leading a touchdown drive in the last game against the Patriots, potentially Belichick's last game ever, okay, that is something that the, play the players will feel. Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, they're not going to stick around forever if they continue to lose. They've never lost like this. I'm saying that to have that glimmer of hope, it could absolutely elevate the It's not rot. It's obviously. asbestos. And we all breathe it in. We're all dying slowly from it. It is, it is black horrible. mold. Oh. It is and Rodgers scoring a play on the first drive is a gas mask. Oh, <laughs> Gangrene? Yeah. <laughs> Jets, gangrene. I thought that was good. Mm -hmm. All right. Dark gangrene. syphilis. Oh. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right. The first topic that I, I think we're, we're safe on. Massive volcanic eruption in Iceland. No one has been hurt so far. Uh, people have been evacuated. Yay! People have been evacuated. Uh, flights have not been uh, deterred or affected in any way. The funniest part about it looks like if you've seen the tweets, it's insane. It looks like you're on Mars. Well, they've known about this for for a month, for a while. Yeah, it's now. been kind exactly of every month ago. Yeah. The uh, it is nuts. yeah. The funniest was just the tweet from from Rear Admiral. It is. Hang on, we'll get. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Rear Admiral's tweet. This shit is insane. It's gonna be ugly when Mother Nature has its big ass lava spewing, earth shaking ultimate orgasm. Fun okay, normal, kind of. Just another reason to buy physical media. <laughs> <laughs> I actually kind you, of agree. Of with course, them. you agree with it. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. a huge physical media guy. The, yes. Uh, RA. I say, agree. RA. Get out there. Get your CDs. Get your DVDs. Yes. Blu-rays. Because you can't trust the, the corporations. Comes, you will not have Wi-Fi to stream. Yes. You just got to use those fucking. You got records. Mm -hmm. I'm with you, RA. We're absolutely right. Battery-powered DVD players. I, yes. Yeah, I feel like RA just has like a doomsday bunker kind of prepped with just like hard copies of fucking yeah, the like town and Goodwill Hunting, and, and Goodwill Hunting, all these Boston movies. He's Peter absolutely Pitch. right. Yeah, this is obviously a scary situation, but uh, everyone should buy physical media. Is are volcanoes the coolest natural phenomenon disaster? I think so. I mean, it's wild. It'd be right. I forget that they're like real things. If, I feel like they seem in like pictures of like dinosaurs, like in the. How about meteors striking the Earth? That's a natural. That, that's that's wild. That's kind of crazy. Tsunamis that's, are crazy. Tsunamis. Oh, Tsunami. whoa, water. <laughs> the we were just talking on Twisted History. Download, rate, subscribe. Uh, the Christmas or the Boxing Day, Christmas Day, Boxing Day tsunami in like the the Philippines and stuff. How crazy that was. There's a video going around the internet right now where it shows like the first wave where the water like recedes before the tidal wave. You, I mean, you just have no time to react to that. Tsunamis are insane. But I still think, like, visually, a volcano is crazy. The, the magma, it looks like crazy. it's... Yeah. You kind of want to eat it. Yeah. You want to touch it. You want to play with it. Yeah. You <laughs> no. What? You know what you I do? mean? Yeah, I know. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, you know how you it's look It's like at, bright colors. It's like, oh, look, look this, at a, this would be good. You look, look at a bar of soap, and you're like, that looks like it kind of tastes... Or Tide, I know uh, tide Pods. Or, or Tide those, Pods. Oh, those look so good. Yeah. Those look like gummies. Smitty, you don't you don't agree? You don't look at it like a good bar yeah, like I, zest I, 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 and go, hey, yeah. take a bite out yeah. of it. No, I don't look at soap, think it's edible. I don't look at fire and want to touch <laughs> it. I don't look at Tide Pods. I think that they're edible. They look good. How does that look good? It's a cool bright colors. It looks like a it looks uh, like I'm a not saying I would eat it, but I yeah. I think about it. Yeah. I have I have self-control. I don't yeah, eat it. Yeah, I don't eat it. But I know in my head I'm like they made that to look good. Tornadoes. It's my number one. Oh. Tornadoes, I don't know. In Indiana, we got a lot of those. Yeah. We're like in the corner of Tornado Alley, so they're just kind of old hat to me. I don't really care. Twister is like, a good eh. movie. Twister is a good movie. Great cast. Phillip Twister, Phillip. I mean, it's, hey, let's go hide in this, or, no, they, they that's like the, the joke, is they go hide in that building, and they turn around, and there's all those like knives and blades. Yeah. But I feel like they're like driving like a million miles an hour through the cornfields. Yeah. I feel like that would cut the hell out of them, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. There's windows down, just getting pelted by corn. It's exciting. Corn. Corn is more dangerous than a tornado. Fun fact. What? Yeah. 
more deaths from, from corn than there is a tornado. Oh, probably right. I have a big bathtub is like the most dangerous Smitty, things we have. Yeah, Smitty, Smitty sees right through my bullshit. I was just trying to make Oh, it is that untrue? I'm yeah, sure you do die from that. choking. Actually, corn, I'm going to say allergies? corn corn is more dangerous than probably volcanoes too. Volcanoes, I know like no, bathtubs that. kill so many people each year. Dude, I'm young and I can at least, I'll, I'll almost slip and die in the bathtub at least like five times a year. But I'm young and I can like catch yeah. myself. Yeah. But when I'm 80, I'm toast. Yeah. You ever slipped and fallen in the bathroom? I almost did this morning, to be honest with you. Did you really? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> did you yell at a yeller? Did I you had like, to catch ah! myself. Uh, yeah, no, no, it was, a, it was a shower curtain hold. Oh, really? Damn. Yeah. The whole thing come down? No, okay. no. No, we were nimble. It was good. Yeah. That's how I want them to find me, in the bathtub, <laughs> draped with a shower yeah, curtain. Yeah, that'd be embarrassing. Yeah. Be, be Especially old if you're old. Go. Yeah. And you just got an old, gross, saggy body. Yeah. Helen Hunt, she was in Twister too. Right? She was. Bill Paxton, right? Helen Hunt, Bill Paxton. Who's the, it? Was Bill Paxton the main guy? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Philip Seymour Hoffman, like I said, he, he's in that. Yeah. A good cast. Twister, go rent it. Yes. That was one of the one of the first movies I remember renting from like a blockbuster, like as a kid. I don't know what year that was, like ninety six, ninety seven. Yeah, ninety six. Yeah. Yeah. I brought, I brought a date to see it. Oh, how'd that go? Not not good. No. <laughs> I did. Yeah. <laughs> did not go well. What's the most, what's the best uh, date movie you've seen in theaters? Or the best date you've been on? Well, the first one I ever saw was Beethoven. The movie with the, the giant <laughs> dog. Oh, my yeah, very yeah, first yeah. date was at Beethoven. I was thinking like Amadeus, but yeah, the Beethoven dog. Beethoven That's dog. That's gotta yeah. be good. Yeah. That was good. Yeah, that, that date went, went a little better. I got a, got, a, got a peck on the cheek for that one. Uh, yeah. 13, 12 years old or something like that when that came out. But uh, the Twister one did not go well. Mm. It was a one and out. I went and saw Pirates of the Caribbean in like seventh grade with with a, a little double date, yeah. uh, sitting next to the girl, I said, if you were a pirate, which shoulder would you put your parrot on? This one or this one? Put my oh. arm around her. Real smooth, Vimsy. What'd you do? She liked it. Yeah. And we split some Skittles. Ooh. And you know what that's slang for. Uh, yeah, after show. Mm. Barstool Spelling Bee was yesterday, or it went out yesterday. Uh, I... There, people say they're more scared of like speaking in public than death. Yes. I am more scared of spelling in public than than I am of death. Spelling in public is my my biggest fear. I hate it. Hmm. If you watch the spelling bee, you can tell. Yeah. Uh, that spelling bee and the spelling bees we've done here before, like even when there were ten people working here, there are realistically only three people that can win a spelling bee. Yeah. I work at Barstool Sports. Yeah. I'd say the the maybe 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 five to ten now, but I, was, I don't want to spoil it. But the, the finalists were yeah I would have, yep yeah yep that was pretty much who I would have expected. Like you you're not going into that and thinking you know, like me obviously, but like Big Ev's coming out with the national championship of, of uh, yeah. right yeah I, Big Ev first, at that they'd be a big surprise that <laughs> Big Ev took one. I respect his his dedication. Yeah, to took his a team. stand. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Taylor Swift, PMT. Some some. Taylor Swift said "fuck" from the, the 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 her box. Okay. And PMT obviously made a joke about it. And then there's a video of a girl. But is this woman trolling as a joke? Yeah, I there's know. a woman very upset at part. Yeah, of she's my very team. upset I'm about their 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 joke. Showed Taylor Swift up in the box, and uh, she used the F word. Yep. Loudly, yep. And you have to wonder, like, is that the kind of girl that we want as the face of the NFL? Nope, I don't think so. Yeah, as a, as a father of a Swifty, I don't. I think I'm gonna have to ban it now. I mean, it's disgusting. My son did actually say "fuckhead" the other day, and I, I had to, I had him tell me it again because I wanted to laugh, and then I was like, "Don't ever fucking say that." I have no words, absolutely no words for this. I. Like, if I even have to explain why that was so disgustingly misogynistic and hypocritical and double standard, I have no hope for humanity. We've reached the part, like, joke. the part of the internet where, like, no one is believing what they, like, I don't know who to believe, who's trolling, like, everything now is, nothing is real. Everything is fake. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of where I am with everything. The I assume internet, everything is fake. The internet used to be great when it was just, like, people not going out for clout. Like, it was just people getting hurt. And you'd laugh, and you knew it was real. You knew it was genuine. But you I knew remember, it wasn't people trying to go viral. It's always been. I remember being like in junior high in like AOL chat rooms, and we would say we were like 
ASL? Yeah, and we'd be like, oh, a 35 female. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. like, we didn't, you know, we didn't know what you were doing. Yeah, so, like, it's... like, I've been lying, or people, like, the internet's been, like, lying since the 90s. I think, so you, yeah. You, you would be a chat room female? Oh, we did. We were like 13. We fuck. We didn't know what we were doing. We were just fucking around. We, we, like we did, we had no idea what we, even what we were saying. And I'm sure we were, there were probably just other idiot 13 year old boys in there with us. Right. Because like yeah. we would have easily been exposed pretty quick of not knowing what the fuck we were talking about. It's just yeah. There's 13 year olds. Yeah, it's a moron. I was an idiot. I mean, immediately now, it's even more of an idiot then. How about you? You ever you never did shit like that when you were a kid? I was in the chat rooms. I I I, I always, when you were I was always like, I never catfished in there. We didn't even know we were cap. We were just like pretending. We, no one was like going on dates. We were all just pretending we were like just different people. No, I know. And I remember. I, I, I remember you couldn't trust anybody in there being like an right. actual. Like if you you got a girl, like you can't trust that being a girl because of people like you. Yeah, I, mean, I have big tits. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So AOL adolescence was a complete failure. Yeah. 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 Well, luckily we matured on to this. Topic. Now it's just yeah, yeah, yeah no, I mean, now it's just out yeah now yeah. it's all yeah it's it's fake outrage I'm outrage. so upset uh, what else in the after show LCB was oh yeah not doing a podcast anymore they're doing more uh, short form video social stuff which that's kind of how I like the first ancillary barstool thing that I started following was lights camera and it was all through their like Instagram their socials so it bums me out it's I, gonna be I think it's gonna be fine it's gonna be Oh, I think it'll be. I mean, the people listen to the podcast, yeah, but it's, it'll still do numbers. And I'm bummed out that's the way the world's going. Where, like, people do seem to, like, especially younger people seem to really like short form media more. And that's just not what I like. I like movies. I like longer stuff. I like. And, and the world's just passing me by. And that, th those kind of stuff, that kind of stuff kind of always bums you out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Are you more of a. Are you like, do you like long form podcasts? Are you. Uh, back when I had. Uh, an attention span for uh, more than 10 minutes. Yes. But now I can... You have a long train ride. What are you doing on a long train ride? You know, do you, you ever listen to like a long show or something yeah, just we, for a long we, commute? We, we read, we listen. Yeah. We, 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 we try to be uh, a member of functioning society. But I, like, obviously, why wouldn't you... Short, short form is a lot more entertaining. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's right not, now. It's I, just the way it is. I mean, that's what people—that's what people like. Yeah. I know, like TikTok and stuff has totally changed the, the game. The instant gratification you get out of short form and then and TikTok it is a lot more than. It's so much more fulfilling with the longer work, though. I feel. No, I agree. It is. You know, like I don't know, whatever. With short form, though, I don't like how you have to. Like, I got to be too alert when I'm watching TikTok. I want to put something on, then like do other stuff. Yeah. You can't like. It's true too. Put on like a short form something and then go about your day. Like, like you have to keep. Like going to the, a new one. Going to the gym or like uh, doing dishes, I'll listen to a podcast. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, all right, I don't, I can't just watch a TikTok. You know what I mean? Right. I don't know. I yeah. I, I, the whole I, I'm I'm fearful that one day, like 30 years from now, every movie coming out to be like 30 minutes or less. Yeah. I, like, are we gonna go that strong in that other direction to appease this generation that's been raised by TikTok? I I hope not. I, I think the one thing we can all agree on with this is buy physical media. Buy <laughs> physical media. I, I'm, I'm actually, after this show, I'm going to go, with, I bought a, a new DVD last night. I buy. You bought a video game. Did you go buy a video game? I didn't buy. Night? I didn't have a good slice. I, you, you know, have a PS5, I, and I said, you know, you can just download the video games. And he said, nope, I want the hard copy in my hand. You and Rare, very similar. Yes, and we're also both old. Well, yeah. But, but I went and bought Out of Sight, the Jennifer Lopez, George Clooney movie. Wait, wait, wait. It's just a good movie. I didn't own it. Out of Sight. I, I know it's a good movie. He was buying a DVD of Me? Out of Sight. Why is that crazy? Why is that crazy? It's I like the movie. I can have it forever. I don't want this, the corporate overlords to take it away from me. It makes perfect sense. Sense. You think the cashier was like, yeah, this sweet, sweet 50-year-old man in a sweater came in yeah. and bought a hard copy of Out of Sight. Out of Sight. If she, hey. if that's the story she <laughs> got from her dad. Yeah. Yeah. Oliver, Oliver, <laughs> Oliver Stone's brother came in and bought this. <laughs> it, it's a very good movie. That was Oliver Stone, right? No, it wasn't. It no, was, was it? Uh, Soderbergh. Okay. Stephen Soderbergh. Yeah, I directed that. How about that? Right before he directed Traffic. Huh? Traffic. The old man still got it. Traffic's he must be movie. so lonely if he's buying these hard copies and... No! I what his life looks like. No, I, I watch him with my wife. We oh, got the yeah. dogs. The dogs enjoy the movies. Uh, it's, a, it's a hard copy. And also, you know, if you like shows like Sopranos, you like some of these shows, they've already taken um, 
It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, but... They've removed, like, six episodes. You can't get them. You have to buy the physical media. Yeah, but shows like The Sopranos, you can just watch in short form on TikTok over two hours now. That's so weird. It is. It it's, is. It's weird, but it gets the job done. No. Have it on a nice TV. Relax. Make some popcorn. And hey. Soak in the media. If you need your Sopranos fix and don't have time to well, watch all 40 hours... Seasons. You go through TikTok, just boom, 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 boom. The true the treasure of Sopranos is in the little moments, though. Those, and you, you get that from watching the entire series. You're not wrong. It, You're not wrong. It is fun you to go over to someone's house, though, and see their like hard copy DVD collection and judge their interests from it. Oh, yeah. You know? You're well, like, yeah. Oh, okay, Usually they... the first thing I do when I went to somebody's house is like, oh, let's see the movie collection. Right. Yeah. And, I, and yeah. I would judge them. Yeah. I'd always say it was nice, but a lot of times you're like, this person likes some shit. Yeah. You know? They got. Joanna Man on, on hard copy and <laughs> like that's the comedy you have. You really like uh, Eddie with Whoopi Goldberg, huh? Yes, yeah. All right, John Rich, anything else? I think we're good. We, all yeah, right, we've covered all. Wait, well, did, did any of you here? Maybe I don't know if you guys saw us. Do you see the Castellani space last? So night? I saw there was uh, spaces with with Castellani, Big Cat, Rico, and uh, uh, Jerry Rosillo Ros- Ros- got in there. Jerry, yeah. Jerry got in on it. I didn't get the... I don't... Rico and Rosillo interaction was very bizarre. Yeah, that was... I did not hear a clip of what they said to each other, but I, everyone was saying it was a wild interaction. I didn't understand. Yeah, Rico was asking him questions, and uh, at one point, Rosillo thought Rico was Dave Portnoy? Hey, hey Chris, I'll lighten the mood here real quick. You, you got to block out the haters sometimes, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm actually going to uh, take my shot. I see Rosillo in here. Uh, hey, Rod, big fan. I thought you were uh, hysterical on the rewatch with the town when you did the Massachusetts history and all those lines uh I don't know if you you know listen I, I'm sure you're gonna do Jerry after dark it's a bigger show but maybe you throw a bone to the old pup uh healthy debate sometime would love to have you on what do you think I'm just not an embrace debate guy no no no, no. It's, this, it's healthy debate is this Portnoy no it's healthy debate not embrace debate healthy debate I was banned from first take so I just don't know that I fit is this Portnoy no, no, it's Rico. You you had mentioned oh. me on the Life podcast last year when I threw a can. You said negative things, but I have come there a long is. way. Yeah. <laughs> Rico R- R- is a Boston guy. He uh, he's an interesting guy. He had, a, he had an interesting thing happen a few years ago. Walked into a house drunk and naked, uh, and he's found by a neighbor. Um, happens to the best of us. Happens to a lot of us, yeah. Uh, no, the Rico and Rico interaction was very strange. I don't know why he thought Rico was Dave. Very strange. The whole thing was very bizarre. In college one time, I was, I was staying at a friend's dorm at Purdue, and we were all asl- like in our spots asleep. The door opened, and someone came in and like laid down on the floor, and we're just like, oh, it's someone, it's, you know, someone coming back. It's one of the guys. All of a sudden, the door, or we woke up the next morning, and it was some random person that just came in the dorm room and fell asleep on the floor. Was it Ryan Russell? It was not. <laughs> it was not Ryan Russell. What's your problem? Rico's here. My problem? Yeah, I just heard you from over there. What you, what's my problem? I said, I said your interaction was very bizarre. Very bizarre. Yeah, what was <laughs> That was what I said! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of sounded, it reminds me of uh, in Waterboy, when he like, calls in to the wrestling guy and he's like, hey, yeah. Uh. Like Rico was just like, come on, know who I am. And he was like, who the fuck is this? Uh, that was perfect. Yeah. That was perfect. Should have just ended it on that. Yeah. Yep. yep. <laughs> Good fight. All right, that's the rundown.